Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll show you how I created this stylized construction barricades using Blender and Substance Painter. This is part of a modeling series I'm working on for an upcoming asset pack focused on urban stylized props. So sit back, enjoy the process, and let's get into it. To start, as always, I created some scale references. I used a simple armature with human scale, plus a traffic cone I made in my previous video. This way I had good scale and proportion from the start. Then I simply added a plane, applied a mirror modifier to duplicate in the four corners, and I started shaping the first barricade. If you want to preserve the mirror modifier and make things easier, you can cut some faces from the model you are working on and separate them from the mesh. This will create a new object in the scene with the same modifiers, and you can continue working on another piece using it. For this project, I mean the entire asset pack, I created a full planning board with art direction, a prop list, and image references. I constantly check it while modeling to stay aligned with the style I want. It is a great practice if you want to keep your models consistent because Trust me, plan it first if you want a solid and cohesive results. For those little bolts, I just created one and used Alt plus D to duplicate it as an instance. This way, if I need to make changes, I only have to modify one and all the others will update automatically. It saves a lot of time when you have many duplicates. Even when it's time to UV ungrab, you only need to ungrab one and all of the instances will share the same UVs. Then, since I had planned to make another variation while keeping it similar, I took part of the first barricade to start the second one. This way I could keep the modifiers and begin with a model that already has very similar proportions, and from there I continue shaping a new variation based on my references. This time I want to create a barricade more specific for blocking an under construction area, whereas the first one felt more general purpose, like simply blocking a road. As always, to start the optimization process, you need to have two versions of your models, a folder called high poly and another one called low poly. Each model in the high poly folder should have an underscore high suffix, and the duplicate in the low poly folder should have an underscore low suffix. This way we have two versions ready to bring it to, into Substance Painter, and there we will use the low poly version and project all the details and curved surfaces from the high poly onto the low poly version, saving a lot of triangles in the process. That's how game asset optimization works. If you want to learn more about this process, you have a full video on my channel for this. Since this is a model that I want to sculpt, I set aside the low poly folder for now and continue working on the high poly version. 
I simply added a remesh modifier to the pieces I wanted to sculpt, using a low value to get a good density for sculpting, and then using the scrape brush from the free or brush pack, I gave it that classic stylized look. Most of the final details will be added later in Substance Painter. This is one of the most important steps in the creation process of an asset pack, in my opinion. You just need to assign a vertex color to each piece of the model. This allows us to use those colors as masks in Substance Painter to apply different materials. You can always skip this step, but keep in mind you will need to rely on other masking methods in Substance Painter. There are many, but this one is my favorite. It gives a lot of freedom for masking without having to manually paint every piece with polygon fill or brush, for example. Now, back in the low poly folder, I can start optimizing the meshes. The goal here is to remove any subdivisions of bevels and drastically reduce the polygon. However, the most important thing is to keep the silhouette. It should closely match the high poly model, otherwise you might run into issues during the baking process. There are some exceptions, like baking a chamfered area, which can work, but it is best to keep those minimal. For those wooden planks where I want to add color stripes, I need to make sure the UVs are laid out properly so the stripes align correctly. To do that, I keep the UV islands connected and only mark seams along the sides and one edge at the bottom to hide the visible breaks. For the rest of the low poly optimization, just focus on reducing polygons, remember to preserve the silhouette and use triangles as much as possible. They are great for optimization if you don't plan to rig or deform the meshes. You can always use end guns, but remember to triangulate them later. Finally, make sure there's a sharp edge along each seam and apply a weighted normals modifier to correct the shading. Once you finish the UVs and low poly optimization, make sure to apply all the modifiers on both the low poly and the high poly folders before exporting it. Also, be sure to convert each instance into a real object, otherwise you might run into baking issues. Now, here in Substance Painter, I imported the low poly model and baked the details. If you want to learn this process step by step, I have a detailed video on my channel covering it all. As you can see, I had an issue here. 
It happened because I modified the low poly version and the high poly mesh had different names. I fixed it by simply renaming them to match. I also had another baking issue here. I figured out the fix and I had to separate the side support planks and then in Substance Painter manually adjust the max frontal and rear distance to bake them properly. The Neo 2 gauge feature didn't work for me this time and caused this error too. But the most important thing to remember is that errors are normal part of 3D modeling. I've been doing this for 6 years and I still run into issues sometimes. What really matters is learning how to handle and fix them and that only comes with practice. Now we are ready to start texturing. I usually begin by applying my stylized base material, which you can download for free in the description, along with other useful resources. I simply set the base color for each part to match my reference and get a quick preview of how the final result will look. As you can see, instead of defining the final color right away, I start by setting the base material layer. For example, on the sign, I apply the raw metal material first. That's because later I add some wear and tear to rebuild this base layer, giving it a realistic worn surface. I do the same with the wood, applying a base wood layer first, then peeling the paint on top to show the material underneath. There are many ways to peel off a layer, but the method I find easiest is to apply a white mask over the top material and simply paint on it to reveal the bottom layer. Just make sure to play around with filters, for example, the new anisotropic filter can give a very stylish look and help to avoid unnecessary micro details. To create a design for the construction sign, I use Photoshop, but of course you can use any drawing software. I simply took a screenshot of the sign from my reference and painted a symbol over it. Then I imported that decal into Substance Painter along with a black and white version to use as a roughness, metallic or height map.
for the metal edgeware, I use the same method as with the good. Just add a white mask and paint to rebuild the bottom layer. Then I apply it in an anisotropic filter to smooth it and keep that clean and stylish look. Finally, I exported the texture using my Blender PBR export preset, feel free to take a screenshot if you want to replicate it. Then in Blender, I imported the textures, organized my models and export them as FBX and OBJ. And that's it, this is the final result. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Remember, all my resources are in the description if you want to grab any of them. Also, if you want to access to my members-only videos in full length without audio, you can join my channel right next to the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.